Welcome back to the Dumbest Hobby Channel on all of YouTube, where I just screw everything up and make uh, a lot of complaints. No, not. We occasionally have some success on this channel. Welcome back to the Andy Hobby Headquarters Sherman Tank Build, uh, the M4A3 E8. Easy 8. There we go. Said it once. <laughs> I'm going to try to reduce that. Um, so you saw in the last part, we did our headlights. Ah! We didn't glue that on yet. Uh, or whatever. We all The, the tracks are going to hold it on. Again. Go watch part two. Son of a, forget it. Just stay there. We did our headlights. We wired them up with L micro LEDs. And now I'm working on the tail lamp units and I said I was gonna have them uh, lit all the time because literally I ordered a, a, a two AA battery holder with a switch built into it and some JST pigtails. I'm just gonna make a very simple setup in here. Uh, I'm pretty positive I could just lift the turret off whenever I want after it's built. Uh, so I'm just gonna drop the battery holder into the hull and uh, whenever I want to, I'll just lift off the turret and I'll flick the little switch and the headlights come on and I want the taillights to come on. Um, in real life, when they hit the brakes, I think it was only the, the left side upper lens would illuminate for the brake lights. Uh, but if they were convoying at night where they weren't under immediate threat of enemy attack, uh, and they didn't have to run like as dark as possible, uh, you did have the little blackout taillight things underneath there. So I'm going to run the blackout taillights, the bottom half of the tail lamp assemblies. I'm going to run both of them lit, just that's it. It might not be 100% correct, but it's all for effect for the normies, like we said in the last video. For the, you know, the casual observers among us. Um, or just people who like LED lights. I love lights on everything. Hell, I mean, just look at half the crap we build on this channel. Lots of lights! Um, either way, I went ahead, and those are the two tail lamp bulby, uh, tail lamp uh, uh, covers. Uh, we took our little, uh, to me, a handy drill with a itty-bitty PCB bit. Uh, the biggest one in the set that I got from Amazon, and it was a perfect size to drill out those little slots. So I put four holes through there, and then I just cleaned them up with an X-Acto, and uh, they're ready to go for their lenses. We are going to make lenses. Look at this. Mr. Resin. It's not from Mr. Hobby. You would think it would be, you know. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Glue, Mr. Mark Setter, Mr. This, Mr. Airbrush. Um, so this is the uh, this is Japanese, I believe, right? Made in JA Pan, I think, possibly. Not really sure. Is it? It's supposed to be. It looks like well, it's Japanese writing, but they could be totally punking us, and it might not actually be made in JA Pan. Uh, either way, I've used it before. It is fantastic stuff. Comes with a couple little scoopy mixy things, okay? Little spoons and drippers and stuff. Um, and all these are silicone, so you don't even have to worry about cleaning up afterwards. Uh, you wait for all the resin to dry and then pops right out. And then for tail lamp, we got this 16 color set of resin dye. And uh, that's orange, Ooh, pink. That's not what we want. Ruby! We're going to use our ruby red. It's a nice, nice deep red. A, a tiny drop or two will do you. And uh, we're going we're gonna to make actual lenses in here. So I'm going to see if I can get these done quick enough because I'm hopping on the Hobby Time Modelers live stream at 9 p.m. because it is Friday night. I try to hit every Friday night. Sundays I rarely can make it, it seems. Well, it's also holiday season. And my wife still likes me, uh, apparently, and wants to do things with me on the weekend. So, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that she wants that still. So, uh, you know, we obviously haven't spent enough time down here that we're divorced yet. Uh, a lot of modelers. Really, I'm... Sh I, not really, can't really say I'm shocked, but, like, a lot of people, I'm like, Oh, you're divorced. Oh, okay. Don't ask why. You know why. You know. If there's a hardcore modeler... Uh, toy collector, whatever it is, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, I'm divorced. Finally, I'm free of the free of that monster." Like, uh, we we know what happened, dude. <laughs> um, I showered within the last uh, eighteen hours. Okay, I worked from home today. Give me a break. Come on, everyone. Okay, so either way, uh, we'll be right back with making lenses. Another tutorial. I'm like, I'm I'm full of these things. This build. Thank you, Andy, for letting me teach people all of my useless stuff. Be right back. Okay, delicate work here. Okay, we've we've mixed up our little uh, a little batch of red resin, uh, just a little bit of resin, a couple of drips of this stuff. Um, I could put links in the description, and we put it in a paint a paint sticky thing, and then a crazy glue applicator tip on there. Let me try not to get my fat head 
and you can just about you just get it in there okay that one the first one was cleaner but you can see we're just dripping a little bit in there okay that's it all right now what we do is we take this thing uh, that we stole from our wife the UV LED thing and I'm gonna put it on two minutes and uh, we'll be back with lenses and me zooming the hell out a little. Jeez Louise. I was just trying to get close enough so everyone could see the magic. Now you can watch the UV magic. And if I really wanted to torch you, I'd make you watch this for two minutes. But I'm not going to do that. I'm also going to put my pot of uh, UV goo under there. And my uh, UV tool under there. So that way it all cures off and uh, you just snap all the UV. This is dead to us now. Goodbye. I hate wasting a... One of those crazy glue, you know, pointy applicator tips, but uh, it seemed like it suited the purpose tonight. It was a little Rube Goldbergy, but whatever. We'll be back. First of all, huge shout out to uh, longtime subscriber Allison Fort. Gave me a great tip when I was doing my uh, Tamiya 112th scale uh, Humvee RC car. Um, I was trying to figure out how to make headlight and taillight lenses. I was trying canopy glue and all this other crap that wasn't working. And she said, why don't you just try the UV epoxy resin clear glue for lenses? I was like, I had no idea this stuff existed. But it's basically the same stuff using a 3D printer. Um, look at that. There's our lens. Okay, I turned off the lights here so you could see the LEDs a little better. There we go. There we are. We got our little convoy LED lights in there. They're going to look beautiful. Um, curing time on these varies fairly drastically, um, depending on uh, if you add a color. Now, if I just did clear resin with nothing in it, uh, it would be very quick. This was what's left in the pot. It peels right out, but you can see it's still kind of bendy. Um, let's, let's hit our uh, house lights. Here we go. Okay, um, it's still a little soft and bendy, so, you know, you just, you just throw it back in there to cure for a while. It was definitely cured enough to pop right out of our little mixing bowl. Which we'll throw back in the Mr. Resin box. And this stuff will probably last, I don't know, damn near forever if you're just using it for little things like this, like making the occasional lens uh, or, you know, filling in a little thing. But you could use it for uh, any model you're building that has, like, let's say, solid plastic headlamp, tail lamp, um, you know, uh, periscope blocks, whatever. If you, could, if you could carve it out and you could back it with some masking tape or something, you could fill it with resin and have a more realistic looking lens on anything you're doing. So, yeah, it comes, this is a good handy thing. Thank you again, Allison. Best viewer ever. Um, I, I, we sent her a tank kit once, I believe. Um, because she was so awesome and she won a prize. Uh, she actually, like, paid attention and answered questions and stuff. I haven't done that in a while. I probably gotta do that again soon. Uh, but either way, depending on the power of your UV thing, this gets pretty hot. This is for curing nails. I borrowed this from the wife. She never asked for it back, so I'm keeping it <laughs> until she says something. Uh, clear, clear, clear with a decent UV lamp, one to two minutes, it's rock hard. Uh, when you add colors, especially darker shades of color like reds and violets and things, maybe like yellows would probably, yellows cure faster, oranges if you're not doing too much orange, but you get it. The darker the color, uh, the longer it takes the UV light to cure the resin because the resin... The UV light has more, takes longer to, to penetrate down, or whatever it is. It just takes longer with colors in it. That's all. Um, but yeah, it works, it works a treat. Yeah, this is, this is still kind of soft. See, we can still bend it. It's still bendy. Um, it will get hard. Oh, Jesus. Oh, why did I say that? Okay. It just, it, it just takes a little longer once you start adding the colors. There is no, no, there's no Viagra joke here, is there? Um, either way, uh, yeah, if we're, how big is this battery? This battery is 20 millimeters in, uh, diameter. 20 mils. There we go. I think this metric side of the cutting mat from, from, uh, from, yes, Andy's Hobby Headquarters, of course. Uh, it's very nice. It has all sorts of fun stuff on it. I guess you could cut masks and stuff with these. I don't know. We're just measuring. I have no idea. Um, so yeah, we're just going to cure this, and when we come back, we'll have our bulbs and our taillights, just like we did for the headlights, same thing. Uh, you do have to be concerned with light blocking. Uh, so, you'll want to test 
you'll want to test light all of these things with your finger over the lens. Oh, well, whatever, you can't see. But you want to test light them and look for any light shining through plastic or where you've drilled the holes for the wires. And you'll want to go in there and you'll want to, you'll want to block those off from light. And to do that, we've got some other paint products somewhere here. Um, if I could find it, I would show you right away. I know I have it. I bought it for the Enterprise, and now I can't find it anywhere. But it's called Tulip. Uh, it's a fabric paint, sort of technically, I guess. Yeah, fabric paint. Um, but it's, you, it, it, it's a great light blocker because it's extremely thick and goopy and does not uh, transmit light. I can't, I can't find my damn tulip. Uh, but it's like a hobby. Fa oh, here it is. Ah, we found it. This stuff for light blocking. But I'll show you that later in the video. Okay, tulip, slick, dimensional fabric paint. Black, noir, noir. Like, uh, like my cologne in high school. Okay, we'll be right back. Well, it's uh, it's soldering Saturday over here. Um, we got all our headlights and we got our taillights in during the uh, live stream last night. Uh, go check that out. It's simulcast to my channel, so go to my channel and click on the live tab, and you can see the live stream. <clears throat> We've got our soldering iron out and our solder. You know, I thought I was really not great at soldering, but I think the problem was, which I'm pretty sure now. More than, oh, yeah, this doesn't work on camera as well at work. There we go. Get a little more right here. There we go. Um, so this is, oh, this is new solder. Ooh, get the soldering iron away from my hand. I feel the heat. This is new solder from China, of course, uh, versus this is what I was using. This is Radio Shack solder from, ah, uh, 30 years ago, yeah, uh, no, no, 25, 20, 25 to 28 year old solder uh, from Radio Shack, it's really bad, <laughs> it, it just like, it like doesn't want to melt, uh, kind of solder's whole job is to melt, um, but it didn't want to melt, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we're just soldering some leads onto these, soldering some leads on the LEDs, and then we're going to get a little heat shrink on here. And uh, I was just on a live stream on Hobby Time Modelers. Hobby Time Modelers, guys. It's all sorts of shenanigans. It's really just hours of us guys hanging out and goofing off and riffing on each other. It's pretty fun. But there is some stuff happening. But this was the uh, gaming stream that uh, Marvel PHX, Marvel Phoenix, uh, I guess, abbreviated. Sorry for the heat gun noise. Got our little... Oh, it's... I'm so zoomed in. But, uh... This thing's great. This lithium ion Makita heat gun is fantastic. I love it. It's so convenient not having that damn electrical cord getting in the way when you're working on something as detailed as a model kit. Um, so yeah, but yeah, we're on our last lead right now for our one of our uh, our convoy taillights, or our blackout taillights, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, now, the best way, and I'm going to show you the, my favorite way to, to get these things soldered together, is you want to bend, let's see here, okay, so you want to grab onto this little lead, and you want to, you want to bend it back over on itself a bit, okay, so you end up with like a little hook, okay? And you, you clamp that little hook. Can you see that? That little hook we got bent in there. I'm gonna bend that little hook in there basically. Okay. And we wanna kinda, wanna kinda pinch it shut a little bit. There we go. Okay, so it's pinched shut as much as we can. I know this is this is super zoomed in. Um, we are, we're taking some of our uh, 28 gauge silicone jacketed wire from BN Tech Go uh, stuff I got on Amazon, uh, but it's 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 hyper flexible. It's super flexible. Uh, sometimes. 
most of the time that's a great benefit and sometimes it's not. But just because it says it's 28 gauge, I use like the the 2022 gauge to strip it because I don't want to lose any of those leads. It's stranded wire. So, you know, you don't want to lose any strands. You want all the wire you can get. Well, I'm, I'm honestly doing pretty well here staying in frame for a how-to and then grab this like in the middle of that stripped area and bend that into a bit of a V. And then you hook it onto the other, you hook it onto the hook you made on the other wire and try to try to wrap it around itself wherever possible. There we go. And twisty twisty. And clamp it with some tension into the helping hands and pinch everything together. And uh, yeah, that's that's probably the that's one of the easiest and best ways to get a nice a nice connection. There we go, a little more, a little more there. Perfect. Okay, don't breathe in the solder fumes if you can help it. Try to hold your breath while you're soldering. Have a fan going nearby to blow away the solder fumes because uh, uh, they're not good for you. And that solder is made in China, so it's extra not good for you probably. I'm gonna snip off a little bit of heat shrink tubing and slide her on, and then. Slide her over our freshly soldered connection there and clip her back in to the helping hands. Get this, there we go. And uh, get a little, little more Makita heat gun action going. There we go. Okay, now let's uh, zoom you all out a bit. There we go. And rotate the camera a little bit. There we go. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to get our helping hands the hell out of here for a second. And uh, strip off the other end of our wire. And you want to test your LEDs constantly. Every every process you go through, you want to test your LEDs to make sure you didn't booger something up, basically. So we're going to strip off the end of these wires. And we've tested the other three, and they're all good. And uh, if you have some of these button cell 2025 or similar batteries floating around, and there you go. We got a working tail light. So now all four of these lights work. And uh, what we need to do now is some uh, housekeeping in the wiring department. So what we're going to do is uh, break out the hot snot gun. And we're going we're gonna to press these all down into place. And we're going to hot snot all the wires into the chassis. Um, and probably bring them all up somewhere near the turret. And then we will uh, we'll bundle them together, trim them down, strip them down, and then wire them into this little mini JST 1.25 millimeter. So JST 1.25, you don't have to go this small. JST 2.0, perfectly small enough. Uh, I just happened to have a set of these. I have JST 2.0s, but uh, only the male, not the female end. And the female end is hooked up I used the Tamiya on-off sticker. But this is just a AA battery holder that holds two AA batteries, three volts, nominal. And I uh, wired up the the female JST receptacle to this. And uh, all these lights will run off three volts. Uh, I'll put some high-quality lithium cells, you know, AA cells in here. Uh, I don't need to go through the trouble of, like, hooking up an AC adapter and all that. It's not a big, high-draw model. Like, two AA... <laughs> <laughs> batteries will run these four SMDs for I don't know how long, days probably. Um, but I'm only going to very occasionally turn it on. If I wanted to go a little extra crazy, I could have like drilled an external power switch into like the lower hull of the chassis somewhere so that I could just flip the switch there. But I don't even want to, eh, whatever. It doesn't make a big difference to me. <clears throat> I'm fine taking the turret off and flipping a little power switch on. 
So uh, we'll be back once this is all wired up, and I'll show you a la full full function lighting test. All right. Oh, my 30 cal. There you go. Be right back. All right. <clears throat> yeah. A few hours and a couple beers into the day, we've got all of our wiring completed. Um, we also we we also had the had to glue on all of these brush guards for the lights. That was a severe pain in the ass. But here's our wiring. There we go. Okay, hot snotted down. Oh, I should probably unplug the uh, Gorilla Glue hot snot gun. Uh, so yeah, there we go. And let's see. Contact. Boom! We got headlights. And uh, boom! Taillights. Lovely. That's, that's quite nice. There we go. Let's turn off the overhead. Sorry for the shaky. There we go. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be that's gonna be sweet, and we've got enough slack with all this, okay, that we can easily you know pull our battery pack out of the tank through the uh, once we you just pull the turret off, we'll pull the battery pack out of the tank and we can replace our batteries whenever we need to. But yeah, there we go, fully working. So I'm gonna leave these running for a bit. Uh, just to make sure we don't have any anomalies, because uh, they're already pretty well uh, in place. I tested them multiple times while installing. Uh, I've never really had an LED fail on me other than installing error, where I over-manipulated the leads on it and uh, broke something to break the LED. So, knock on wood, I think we should be okay, but I don't want to speak too soon. Jeez, those brush guards, there's a lot of pieces. Those are fiddly. Um, they go together fine. They're just very fiddly to put together to get those uh, brush guards on the lights. And now it's going to make inserting the lenses a bit more, uh, eh, not difficult, but it's going to be a little, a little more fiddly. Off, on, off, on, off, on. Off, on. That's so nice. If we wanted to get crazy, like if this was a like a really crazy model, you know, you, you could get an Arduino with like a wireless remote and all sorts of crazy stuff. But we're not going to go to that much extreme trouble here. Uh, so there we go. Uh, I didn't want to glue too much stuff onto the upper hull until I got the lights done. Because I knew I'd be flipping it over a bunch to solder and hot glue and etc. But now that this is all done, we could just get back... To standard modeling and the nice thing is since we put this little JST harness on here for the battery pack we can just disconnect it and put the battery pack off to the side and there we go it's it's really not much in the way while we're working on our upper hull and except the lack of gigantic workbench I wish I had I, this is an ample workspace a lot of modelers, you know, you're working on one of those little itty-bitty computer desk things, and... Oh, we're ordering burritos for dinner. Awesome! Getting a burrito from a gas station. Don't knock it till you've tried it, depending on the gas station. Uh, there's a lot of people that work with really small uh, workspaces. This is a 16th scale model, I, and mostly, most of the things we build on this channel are, are fairly large scale. Um, you know, occasionally we're, we'll throw a little... We'll throw a little fella together, a little 144th scale. This is America Gundam, if yeah, you know, uh, from uh, Target. Um, but we usually build bigger things, so I like having a fairly large workspace. We got a couple little previews for you here. We do have an antenna. I think this is from DKLM RC, and I put this on my 16 scale RC uh, tank, so we can put the overheads back on now, I guess. There we go. Okay, yeah, it has a spring in the middle of it, so it's it's nice and springy. A uh, little metal, you know, piano wire type thing here. And it's it's cast or resin printed or something like that. But that's for the uh, for the turret. Um, you know, you know we've got the stowage bits from uh, Value Gear specifically for this tank. But I forgot about these that we got when we visited Andy's Hobby Headquarters in person. Um, $14.99. I wouldn't leave the store empty handed. And so I got these uh, 16 scale jerry cans and fuel drums. And uh, I've had these from Verlinden for quite some time, uh, sea ration boxes. So we'll make up uh, we'll make up a few of these. They give you some basic instructions on how to build the sea ration boxes. 
So yeah, we're gonna do that, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have some ration boxes, we're gonna have some extra jerry cans on top of the uh, value gear stowage set, and then we have some leftover value gear from our previous model uh, when we did the uh, Centurion. So we've got some extra, you know, boxes and tarps and things. So we're uh, gonna mix and match. I like having, I like having extra, extra stowage floating around. You know, get a nice little variety of things going on. I think for Linden might actually be back in business. Um, but yeah, for uh, for the lights, you know, it was, it was oh god, it was a silicone BN Tech Go wire from Amazon, 28 gauge, stranded in red and black, and our soldering iron, which is an A O Y U E. How do you pronounce that? Oyu Oyu. We, whatever, it's fine. It gets hot, it melts solder, if you have good solder. We got our little our heat shrink tubing uh, thing from I-N-N-HOM, In-HOM. Uh, it's all of these weird Chinese brands from Amazon, but whatever, it's fine. does the job. Uh, our little uh, Gorilla Hot Snot Gun, uh, they, these come in handy. Let that cool off when you're done with it. Okay, uh, I, I guess I'm going to be just like gluing things together now, like... like you know, engine deck and some more sh uh, schmageggies on, on here on the upper hull. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Pitstain's toxic YouTube comment hell. Um, I'm on a lot of groups. <laughs> I'm on a lot of groups. This is obviously, you're seeing this from a modeling group. Um, there is occasionally some conflict and moderators must become involved. Use the three buttons and report the post. Report to admins. If you see something that breaks the rules or that is upsetting to you that also breaks the rules. Do not report it if it just bothers you if it doesn't break a rule. But if it breaks a rule, go ahead and report it. It helps them do their job and it keeps the Facebook groups somewhat civil. Um, I saw a fisticuffs today on YouTube on Facebook where somebody said something. Whereas I'm anxious about something about a new bomber and a model kit i'm anxious and some guy goes that's a very extreme motion to have over uh a, mo uh, a a military plane you had no part in designing and the guy got very angry he said i'll punch you in the mouth and the other guy was like come on find me fight me and it was hilarious i just reported everybody i was just like okay you're, you're all just getting a little it's a little overboard we're model model builders <laughs> but uh, i'm having a good back and forth with one of the moderators right now um, you know, it's the DMs, yeah, the DMs demanding they justify why you deleted my post, why you banned me, why you this, why you that. Uh, give it a break, guys. It's just the internet. This is the internet. Welcome to my, welcome to my engine deck of internet. So I was just thinking I had a genius moment and I went, holy crap, look at this. Look at that. These open and close if you glue them on carefully. Little hinges, you just glue them with the pins, be careful. There are a few holes to drill out, but the, uh, yeah, uh, the engine deck opens and closes, well, in order, there we go. I figured, oh, I'll just, I'll just glue my battery pack into the lower hole, but below this, I can just open it and close it to activate and deactivate the lights and change batteries, and then I went, wait a second, uh, that, that's probably not gonna work. Because we are covering this engine deck with value gear. You're not even going to see this damn thing when we're done with this model. It's going to be covered in schmoo and boxes and stuff and junk. Which is how we want to make this look. In situ, covered in gear. Um, we're, we're not going to make this the Fury tank. Oh, so many people. The Fury... It's a great, it's a, it's a fantastic propaganda movie, just like T-34. Basically, Fury, Fury came out first, I guess, but T-34 was like the Russian version of Fury with a T-34 tank, and it, it was a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen T-34, I forget what streaming uh, service it's on, but it's out there. T-34, just, just, you'll find it. It's a, it's fantastic. Um, it's, you know, dramatized, um, obviously, but so is Fury and Inglorious Bastards. I mean, man, I mean, Jubair or whatever the hell I'm, I was, my last name is Schwartz, fair pass. I was bar mitzvahed and I played Little League. 
but I no. Ooh, that was that was rough. The bear that was rough. Uh, but yeah, these engine decks open and close. They're very cool. I may end up gluing them shut. I think we're just going to stick with our original plan of just just lifting the turret off, flipping the switch, putting the turret on, everything's on. Same thing for battery changes. I've got a lot, so I've got a lot of slack built into this. I've got a solid uh, 14 plus inches of slack in here for a very good reason. Because I figured, well, if I have to lift the turret off and put it to the side, then I want to have room to, you know, manipulate the battery cover, take back Kirkland. Yeah, Costco. They're great batteries. They're great. They're like Duracells or something or Energy. I think they're Duracells. Um, yeah, we'll stay with that plan. That would be cool if we weren't doing stowage. We would just we would just open up the little engine compartment covers and we'd flip our switch and we'd close. Wrong order. There we go. Uh, but yeah. So engine deck is mostly built. We didn't put any stowage on it yet. We got the little holder for the sledgehammer and there's we'll do some eh. you know it's like everything else with stowage on a tank you know you got to paint the stowage but then if there's a couple bits of plastic that hold on the stowage that's occasionally a problem uh, but either way um, so that's that um, I got to glue, glue a couple of uh, fuel fluid receptacle covers oil coolant whatever they are gas probably fuel caps um but we'll we'll get those maybe this one's a, i don't know there's so many there's one here one here two here i don't know which is for which i would have to oh i'm really disappointed the uh the fort benning armor and cavalry center pavilion whatever it's not a museum it's not really open daily to the public they're having an open house in december and unfortunately I have an engagement that day that they're having their open house this December, and I cannot go. It's the new building, climate-controlled, massive, hundreds of pieces of armor, and other f armored fighting vehicles, armed fighting vehicles, whatever you want to call it. Lot of lot of cool shit in there. I wanted to do a really thorough walkthrough, a lot of coverage, um, but can't do it. <clears throat> the next open house apparently will be at the end of April of 2023, and it is a two-hour drive for me. They usually start at 10 in the morning, and if I leave here at 8 and they're there 10 to 5 or 6 or something like that, I'm going to get as much as I can done. I, I'm so sorry. I really wanted to put it on the channel for for the first open house since COVID hit. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be anywhere in the realm of being able to go there in December. So that, that sucks a fat one. Um, speaking of sucking a fat one, ugh, let's get all our plastic bits off of here. We've got a lot more crap to glue on the rear of the hull. Um, a lot more. A lot more to glue on. A lot of bits. Just lots of bits. And then, yeah, more bits and more bits and stuff. Oh, dear. This thing's damn near. This is going together quick now. Uh, we've gotten past the really hard parts. Uh, so let me just, let me just glue crap together and I'll be right back. Okay. So we're getting along with the upper deck. I'm getting some fuel caps on, some little, uh, spill rails with little drip holes and, you know, tail light brackety things and these little doodads, little things. Uh, I was in a very lengthy conversation, one of the moderators over at, uh, Mediocre Modelers Group, uh, Andy's Hobby Headquarters Modelers Group. It was a little bit of a kerfuffle earlier today. And I reported a couple people for some unsavory behavior. And the moderator said, hey, I took care of it. And I'm talking to him. And apparently he was, he's was he been friends with Andy for 15 years. And I met Andy last year. Not last year. This year. It's December. So it was earlier this year. Such a nice, genuine dude. And uh, I'm hoping to stop by there in February when I'm out in Arizona again for business. Um... Uh, where was I going? No proper direction with this, but what do you listen to in your modeling? I listen to a lot of motion picture scores, and you can hear a sound and know the movie. You can hear, you know, John Williams and know it's Indiana Jones or Star Wars. You could hear Brian Fidel and know it's a Terminator. You can hear Danny Elfman and know it's Batman 89. You could hear Hans Zimmer. You could, you could just know the movies. You hear the theme to Commando. 
Alan Silvestri, Back to the Future, Avengers. I mean, so many things. Um, who did Jurassic Park? Was that John Williams with Jurassic Park? It's, I love it. I love being able to do two things. One, two things that really entertain me is hearing a picture and seeing music. So when you hear a motion picture score, you can see the movie in your brain. And sometimes when you see a picture, you can hear music. So if you see a picture of Airwolf, you hear that noise. You know, you, you see the A-Team, you see Knight Rider, you know, you, you hear it. Same thing when you hear the soundtrack, you see the picture. It's kind of like the model. It's like, you know, I hear... I hear movies while I'm building this thing. It's just, it's so damn cool. I'm going off on a tangent and getting very philosophical with my YouTube crew. I hope my subscribers appreciate the depth that I'm going into my psyche right now. Or you will jump ship and it's fine with me. Whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Um, we got a lot more little parts to glue on. It is a school night, kids, and I have had... Unfortunately, a very rough few days at work. We had a major outage with a cloud email provider. If you're in IT, you'll know who I'm talking about, Rackspace. Um, that being said, uh, thankfully we weren't heavily impacted by this, but it was still enough that I was working all day Sunday instead of down here with you, my friends on YouTube. You know, it, was, it took me away from my uh, off-duty passion. So we'll be back with a little more progress, and then part three is going up at the end of this part. All right, BRB. Well, the rabbit holes we all go down. You've all been there, gents and ladies. Um, so uh, as I was, I was trying to determine... Well, I, I know these are both for the diesel fuel oil. Um, there you go. Um, I was looking at a lot of pictures online of uh, M4A3 E8 or M4A3 76W tanks. The W obviously being wet for uh, wet ammo stowage. Um, and I was trying to determine, was this lubricating oil or was this coolant? Uh, there's a lot of photos. There's a lot more filler caps. And apparently, it, it, listen, there's going to be people that can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this model is based on not, a f not necessarily a Ford-produced uh, tank, but a Fisher produce tank possibly possibly i've i found i found a couple things okay the internet said so you know that's my excuse for everything um so this is engine coolant because i was uh you know i'm always thinking ahead so we've got an amazing an amazing thing i love using where the hell is it where is it ah this stuff from vallejo oil stains this stuff looks amazing so i'm planning on dripping a little oil stain and letting it actually flow through that hole if I can keep it open during the painting process. And I was like, well, what do I do here? Um, and I was just like, well, if it was lubricating oil, I'll use oil stains. If it was engine coolant, I will not. Uh, actually, being engine coolant, I could potentially do some other fun things. Uh, since, who, I don't, I, who, does anyone know what color coolant the Ford GAA used in World War II in around 1944. There you go. There's a trivia question if there ever was one. What color coolant? Now, based on my F-150 from 2002, it's green. Um, but I know they went yellow, and there's pink, and there's orange, and there's all sorts of colors of engine coolant. Uh, but either way, uh, that rabbit hole has been bottomed out. Uh, we know that's most likely, because the internet told me so. Uh, a coolant cap. So we'll either do nothing on it, or maybe I'll find something that looks coolant-ish, you know, and we can have a little, little, little debris, little, little pooling of something there. But either way, we know the oil stains should go here and here. If we're doing oil stains, which I'm doing, you don't have to. You could have a nice clean tank, like fresh out of a museum. Okay. Um, these little itty-bitty handles... These little three guys here, this one here, and that one there. Oh my god. Okay, grit your teeth, put on your magnifying headgear, and uh, and hope for the best. Uh, not easy. 
I, I, I generally build big stuff, and those things are so freaking tiny. I appreciate the level of pedantry uh, put into this, the details. I mean, I've built a ton of Tamiya tanks. I've never had to glue on a handle that freaking tiny. To me, it's like, nobody's going to do that. They, like, generally will just mold in a little lump uh, where there would have been a handle that small. They'll just mold in a little bump. Um, and then most of the real modelers in the tank uh, forums, they'll just shave those off and, and fold some itty-bitty brass wire and, you know, drill a couple tiny houses, boop, boop, put a little handle in. I love their work. I love looking at all the guys that go through go through all that detail. Um, the brass artisans, as I have nicknamed them personally, I don't think I've ever called one of them that. They'd probably appreciate the nickname. Uh, either way, we'll be right back. I got more tiny little handles to glue on and stuff, but uh, she's coming along, uh, albeit a little bit slowly. Because um, <laughs> once you get to the little bits, I slow down a bit, and I'm like, All right, I'm going to go look at pictures on the internet to see what this feller cap was. That's kind of what happens, you know. I'll turn this around, and I'll get the tiny, itty-bitty microscopic handles on the other side. Oh, wait a second. There are none. Oh, thank the maker. There's no little itty-bitty holes. So all these little things, these were um, quite clearly for little leather straps to strap down the tools onto the uh, upper hull. That's what those are there for. Uh, if you want to go through the trouble of making microscopic little leather straps to hold down your pickaxe head and uh, your other other stowage accoutrement, be my guest. Um, I'll be impressed, and I will uh, if I will call out your fantastic work when I see it on the Facebook groups. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, uh, we got all these little guys here. These little uh, God, uh, say it in the comments what the hell they're called. I, I yeah, I'm tired. I had a long day. Um, the easiest way is to place them in place and just, just tappy tap them with your extra thin cement, just right one at the top and one down at the bottom, and then let them sit for, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, and if you have them at all crooked, then you could slowly align them back to vertical. Um, not really hard to do. Nothing like those little tiny little strap handle thingy bobber. Oh, dear God, those were torture. Um... I got this side done. Uh, they do give you uh, one spare per side in case one goes flying off into the carpet monster or, in my case, the speckle finish, uh, what do you call it, epoxy garage floor coating, which, damn, that finish, it's very hard wearing and hides all sorts of sins, but dear God, is it hard to find light gray pieces of plastic on it. Uh, it's hard to find anything on it, to be honest with you. Uh, but there we go. Those are done. Uh, a lot more little things. i got to get like the mirrors on here. I'm going to lay them down. I'm not going to have them popping up like in the instructions. The vast majority of, of these Shermans driving around, they didn't have the mirrors up. Like they, they didn't care about visibility behind them. They had more Shermans behind them, you know, or blown up Shermans behind them. They were, they were yeah, not using the mirrors. Uh, kind of like most drivers in Atlanta, Georgia, just not checking their mirrors. They just did what the... You're in a tank! What do you need side view mirrors for? Do these stupid things have turn signals? No, they did not. I mean, Leopard 2A6, I think that might have had, and probably the Japanese Type 10. Um, but generally speaking, you know, you're a BMW driver when you're in one of these things. You're just... Mirrors be damned. Turn signals, don't have them, don't need them, never wanted them. I'm just gonna tank my way through things. Really, I would love to commute to work one morning. Uh, probably, in, yeah, more, probably in Abrams. Actually, you know, a Type 10 would be perfect to commute. Rubber padded tracks, you know, and that, that, I think it's a Mitsubishi diesel V12 in that thing. I think it can get up and scoot pretty fast. I'm not sure if it's faster than the Abrams, but it's definitely smaller and more maneuverable than the Abrams, which would be nice for when you get to the parking lot at the office. I don't want to take up more than, say, three or four spots in the parking lot. Five spots would just be rude. So don't take your Abrams to work. Take a Japanese Type 10 and be nice to your business neighbors. Uh, that being said, I'm back into my old tricks, I guess. Um, we'll be back with a tiny bit more progress. Then we're going to upload this tonight, being Thursday. Tomorrow night is our Friday night live stream with the Hobby Time Modelers. Tune in. Seriously, it's it's fun. It's fun, even if you just get me to see me barely do anything and just 
kvetch and moan for like three hours straight watch for 10 minutes whatever we don't care we're we just we're just we're just hanging out and and welcoming people to watch uh kind of like this channel you know and uh hit me up in the comments i don't have a lot of like-minded buddies down here where i moved a thousand miles from home um now this is home and eh, i don't have anybody to talk to really uh hobby related except except for bert at hobby town and i do like bert and kevin at hobby town um in kennesaw the biggest hobby town in the country uh i'll have to do a walk through that place somebody else just did a video on it like i don't know not that long ago and uh, i think i could do better because uh they didn't know him and he didn't know them and i'll be walking in as a regular be like hey bert hey kevin what's up guys i'm doing a youtube thing you want to be in and maybe they say no don't shoot don't don't take pictures of my face, and for good reason. You know, maybe they're uh, on the lam, or they're in the witness protection program. For all we know, I would love that as a job in the witness protection program. Get a job at Hobby Town, like, and the government's paying me to just whatever, do whatever I want. Yeah. Oh man, that would be a sweet gig. Kind of like the movie My Blue Heavens, except I get to work at Hobby Town, and maybe there's better food options. Ooh, exciting. Okay, be right back. I guess add to your movie viewing list My Blue Heavens with uh, Martin. Was it Martin? No. It, no, it wasn't. It was Harold. No, it was uh, Steve Martin and R Rick Moranis. That's it. Rick Moranis. Lewis Tully from Ghostbusters, for anyone that didn't know. Yes, have some. Be right back. Okay, so we got the rear shelf all built up. And for the final assembly of this, with, with the, uh, you know, the arm holds, okay, and the shelf and all that, uh, you're going to want, um, not for the middle here. For the middle here, you want standard extra thin, because you want to make them nice and straight, nice and straight. But for these hinges here and for the pins, you might want to reach... For some Tamiya extra thin quick setting, um, it's just gonna make it a tad easier to get that stuff glued in there. Um, it's it's very very fiddly. I mean, it goes together perfect. It's it's perfectly engineered to drive you mad. Um, it, it fits perfectly together, but oh my god, is it fiddly? Um, so I'm gonna get this. Uh, I'm going to get this glued on to the rear of the lower hull, and then that's going to be the end of the episode. And uh, any progress past this before the next part of the build series, you'll see during the Friday night build on Hobby Time Modelers. Link in the description below. Like, subscribe, comment. Uh, there's a thanks button apparently now. I didn't know there was a thanks button. Apparently you can, uh, you can just send me money for me to kiss your ass on the internet. Uh... I guess I would. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, by the way, any any uh, monetary uh, thing we make from YouTube, whether it's just YouTube ad money or if whatever, you know, if something, I don't know, I don't really want to do, like, ads for, uh, for uh, what do you call that thing? The, you could be a lord. What is that? Distinguished titles or some shit like that. Every channel's doing crap like that. Or, God forbid, Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, stop advertising Raid Shadow Legends. Either way, I'm not going to, I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll ever do that shit. But whatever, it could happen, I guess. But uh, uh, there is a thanks button, I guess. I don't know. Either way, anything we bring in from this channel just goes right into model kits. That's it. We're blowing, it's like, it's like hookers and blow. It's just model kits and, uh, well, and I guess beer. Um... But the model kit and paint and beer fund, uh, that, that's where all the, any, uh, we, we, <laughs> I think, yeah, the channel's barely cracked a hundred bucks and change in three and a half, four months, I guess. But whatever, either way, it'll pay for a model kit at some point, I guess, and we'll build it here and we'll thank all of you for watching. Uh, so yeah, let me get this glued on, I'll be right back. Okay, we're basically, uh, done with step 17 here. I did not glue the upper hull to the lower hull. I do have the rear the rear plate on there. It's glued to the upper only, not to the lower, um, because we're going to keep this split apart uh, until we can put in our 
uh, periscope glass. We're going to save those for later. Uh, just like any good leftover or cooking show, we will save those for later. And you can see our little battery box. I, I don't think it's too cramped in here. I think there's, there's a little bit of room. It's a good roomy hull. It's nice. Uh, but yeah, she looks friggin' fantastic. It's looking amazing. It's looking quite nice. Um, I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this dry this way, just so if any of that stuff seeped down in there, there's a couple of tiny gaps here. Um, right there, you see there's a little gap. Uh, I think it's because this deck is a tiny bit far back or proud or something. I, I might have had a little little gappy gap in here, potentially. Either way, we can we can always hit it with a tiny, tiny bit of thinned out filler or maybe just the primers and uh, base coats and whatnot will fill that up for us. We shall see. We will find out. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful kit going together. Very nice. A little fiddly because it's very detailed. So bear with me. But uh, this is the end of part three. Uh, tonight is Thursday, December, whatever it is. Uh, tomorrow is Friday and uh, Hobby Time Modelers. And you'll see me fighting with this thing some more. It's going to be lovely when it's done. Uh, do I regret pre-ordering the Tiger 1 from Andy? Nah, nah, it'll be fine. At least the, at least those tracks go together easier. I mean, these, these, these tracks went together easy. There's just a lot of them. A lot of pieces. A lot of processes. But otherwise, yeah, awesome kit. Um, working lights are fantastic. Let me turn off this overhead. You know, working... Working lights. I'm sure the camera will make the LEDs show up even brighter than they are in real life. But that is the way of digital cameras and LEDs. All right, everybody. It was fun hanging out. Thanks for coming. Like, subscribe, blah, 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 all the good shit. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. I uh, love it. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.